بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از دی بریسٹ اور دا میموری گلینڈ دا بریسٹ اور دا میموری گلینڈ اٹ از سیٹ ٹو بی ایز دا ماڈیفائڈ سویٹ گلینڈ لائنگ ان دا سپرفیشل فیشیا اینڈ اٹ ہیز دا کیپیبلٹی ٹو پروڈیوس ملک اینڈ نو دس پارٹ دیٹ دا بیسٹ بیسٹ ملک اینڈ دا سویٹ ملک is that of the human being. That's why at the start of the lecture, I would request the female of all the world to please feed your children with your own breast because it is the best and the sweetest milk. Okay, now you look, this is pectoral region. Pectoral major muscle is being covered by a fascia, which is called as pectoral fascia. And the breast or the memory gland it lies over here on the surface of the pectoral fascia and being covered superficially by a skin so the breast or memory gland it lies between the skin and the deep fascia between the skin and the pectoral fascia that is it lies in the superficial fascia and note the point that it is a rounded look the breast the base of the brain the base of the breast is rounded and it extent is usually constant from the second rib to the sixth rib while from the sternal margin to the mid axillary line this is the limit of the base of the breast okay and note the point that the breast lies over the pectoral fascia over here lies the breast gland this one look this breast gland lies over this pectoral fascia you can see this is pectoral fascia and the breast lies over it and it is being covered by a skin over here between the pectoral fascia and the breast tissue there is there is extension from the abdomen of the membranous layer of superficial fascia from the abdomen from over here the membrane of layer of superficial fascia extends superiorly to lie between the pectoral fascia to lie between this pectoral fascia and the breast tissue and this extension of membrane of layer of superficial fascia this is being called as posterior capsule of the breast and note that the breast that lies over this pectoral fascia over here it is being separated from this pectoral fascia by loose connective tissue and this is loose connective tissue which separate the breast from the pectoral fascia this is being called as retro memory space and if you put your hand you can easily lift the breast tissue from this pectoral fascia okay now i told you the base extends from the second to the sixth but note one point note one point that let me say this is the base of the breast rounded base from this upper lateral quadrant from this upper lateral quadrant a small process extends if you can you see it like that if this is the base of the breast from upper lateral quadrant a small process extends superior laterally towards the axilla from this upper lateral quadrant a small process extends superior laterally towards the axilla and this up small extension this small extension from upper lateral quadrant this is being called as axillary tail of the breast 
and this axillary tail of the breast it also lies between the skin and the pectoral fascia but in some cases this would pierce through this pectoral fascia it would pierce through this and would come to lie over here in the axilla along with the axillary contents so in most of the people this axillary tail of the breast it lies superficial to the deep fascia but in some cases it pierces to pass into the axilla okay now the breast is being covered by a skin i told you and the skin is the same as elsewhere in the body but in this central region of the skin in this central region of the skin you would note look a rounded and rounded pigmented area in the central region of the skin of the breast level at the fourth intercostal space there is a rounded pigmented area which is pink in color in pre puberty or in pre pregnancy and then later on after pregnancy it becomes darker in color this this is being called as areola and at the periphery of the areola you will see this small small nodules look these ones make it clear close these small small nodules these are called as tubercles of montgomery at the periphery of the areola the small small nodules which you can see these are being called as tubercles of montgomery and these tubercles are because of the underlying areolar sebaceous glands large areolar sebaceous gland that lies deep to the skin and produce this elevation which are called as tubercles of montgomery okay then at the center of the areola you will see a small projection a small projection this small projection is being called as the nipple okay this small projection is being called the nipple and if at the lower end of the nipple you would see you would see small small foramina in the nipple and this small small foramina in the nipple are actually the opening of these lactiferous ducts that's why if you press the nipple of the lactating mother many layers are many fine layers comes out through this ducts and these are the small small foramen of these lactiferous ducts and note the nipple is being surrounded and nipple is being surrounded by the smooth muscles and when these smooth muscles contract it make the nipple more projected so that because of more projection it becomes very easy for the newborn for the child to keep it in the oral cavity if it for example it is being depressed the child would not be able that's why the muscle that surrounds this nipple it make it project and the child can hold in the or in the mouth easily to be sucked okay now the male breast and the pre puberty female breast these are rudimentary it is almost equal in size it is having areola and small nipple and the tissue deep it it is mainly the, the the fatty tissue but in after puberty in female note the point that the breast consists of 15 to 20 lobules note the point look look this is the skin and with areola and nipple and montgomery tubercles and then from the skin septa look septa like this passes to like this septa passes to attach the skin to the pectoral fascia number 1 and number 2 because of this septa which attach the skin to the pectoral fascia it performs two functions number 1 it divides the breast into 15 to 20 lobules you'll note it over here look 
These are the fibrous tissue septa. This is one lobule. This is another lobule. And these are many. In this way, 15 to 20 lobules. And these are the fibrous tissue septa. These fibrous tissue septa, number one, it separate the lobules from one another, isolate the lobules from one another, and number two, anchors the skin of the breast to the underlying deep fascia. That's why these fibrous tissue septa are also called as suspensory ligament of the breast, or suspensory ligament of copper. It connects the skin to the underlying deep or pectoral fascia. Now, each lobule, in this way, in this way, the the breast is being made up of some 15 to 20 lobules, all being separated from one another by this fibrous tissue septa. And what is the structure of each lobule? Note, look. I make the structure of this one lobule. Look, over here, these are the glands, our mammary glands, our acini. From these glands, small ducts passes over here, and these ducts then unite with one another to form one lactiferous duct. And this lactiferous duct taking this secretion of these glands, which is the milk. But note the part, when you cut the breast, you would find no milk. But when the child put his mouth at the nipple and starts sucking, immediately the great Allah Ta'ala has arranged like that, that immediately the child starts sucking of the nipple, this SNI then start producing milk and the duct all these ducts pass then towards the nipple. The ducts all passes towards the nipple. And before it pierces through the nipple, each duct, look, each duct dilates and then again become narrow and come out of the nipple. This upper dilated part is called as ampulla. In this way, there are 15 to 20 labules and 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts and these lactiferous ducts then opens through the nipple separately. You look over here please. Look, this is gland and this you can see, these are lactiferous ducts and this you can see, look, these are the ampulla, ampulla of lactiferous ducts and then these ducts passes Look, this is the ampulla, it is the lactiferous ducts, this is one lobule, this is another lobule, and then you can see this small, small foramina, these are the foramina of these lactiferous ducts. Okay, and now, this, the, in this way, this lobule consists of the acini, which all make, and then the empty space over here is being filled by the fats. The empty space over here is being filled by the fats. Okay. All right. And now this fat and the electrophoric ducts, these are more developed after the puberty. That's why the, the breast become more tense, more become more tense in the, after the puberty and in the pregnancy. And then in the old age, in the old age, the fats become deficient, the fats become, and then this fibrous tissue receptor, they also become weak. That's why in old age, then the breast become more pendulous. Okay. This description, this description that I have given, this is the description of the breast of adult female. While in the pre-puberty and puberty female and in the male, the breast is there, but it does not contain any glands and lapulli. It's only fats deep to the skin. While the areola and nipple are present, while the nipple is just small and rudimentary in male as well as in pre-puberty -pre female. Okay, this is all about the anatomy of the breast and I hope you will get in the next lecture then we will do the blood supply and then the, the lymphatic drainage which is also very important. Thank you.